I knew not positively then the immediate danger, but everything convinced me danger was hovering about me and that this experiment alone could save me from its jaws. I mounted, therefore, the bedstead unbidden. And Monsieur Dubois placed upon the mattress and spread a cambric handkerchief upon my face. It was transparent, however, and I saw through it that the bedstead was instantly surrounded by the seven men and my nurse. I refused to be held. But when bright through the cambric, I saw the glitter of polished steel, I closed my eyes. I would not trust to convulsive fear the sight of the terrible incision. A silence, the most profound ensued that lasted some minutes, during which I imagine they took their orders by signs and made their examinations. Oh, what a horrible suspension. The pause at length was broken by Dr. Larry, who in a voice of solemn melancholy said, Qui me tiendra ce ça? I began a scream that lasted on intermittently during the whole time of the incision. And I almost marvel that it rings not in my ears still. So excruciating was the agony. When the wound was made and the instrument was removed, the pain seemed undiminished for the air that suddenly rushed into those delicate parts felt like a mass of minute but sharp and forked poniards that were tearing the edges of the wound. When again I felt the instrument describing a curve cutting against the grain, if I may so say, while the flesh resisted in a manner so forcible as to oppose entire the hand of the operator who was forced to change from the right to the left, then, indeed, I thought I must have expired. I attempted no more to open my eyes. They felt as if hermetically shut, so firmly closed that the eyelids seemed indented into my cheekbones. The instrument, this second time removed, I concluded the operation over. Oh no. The terrible cutting was renewed, and this time worse than ever. I then felt the knife rattling against the breastbone, scraping it. This performed while I yet remained in utterly speechless torture. To conclude, the evil was so profound, the case so delicate, the precautions necessary to prevent a return so numerous that the operation, including the treatment and the dressing, lasted 20 minutes. A time for sufferings so acute that was hardly supportable. However, I bore it with all the courage I could exert and never moved, nor stopped them, nor resisted, nor remonstrated, nor spoke. 
except once or twice during the dressing to say, Ah, monsieur, que je vous plains. Twice, I believe I fainted. At least, I have two total chasms in my memory of this transaction that impede my tying together what passed. <laughs>